Well, hello there and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Casey and I'm the designer behind the indie sewing pattern company, Pattern Scout. Today I'm gonna to be switching things up a little bit. Instead of sewing a garment for myself, I'm actually gonna be making a garment for my dog, Huxley. So we've had some really cold and snowy weather here lately in Michigan and, oh, he's, he's ready to go. Okay, go ahead. And I thought it would be a good idea to make him a little doggy coat. I also thought it would be a good opportunity to do a little bit of scrap busting and use up some of the scraps that I have from other coat projects that I've made for myself. So we'll actually have some matching outerwear. I have included instructions for how to draft this little coat pattern in this tutorial, but if you don't want to draft it for yourself, I've also included a link to a pattern for this dog coat and I did grade it into multiple sizes. So definitely check that out if you just don't feel like drafting it for yourself. But if you want a little extra challenge, I will show you how I did this. Okay, if you're ready, let's get started. My first step is to get a few measurements of my little buddy. I wanna make sure that he is standing on all fours just so that the measurements are more accurate. The first measurement I'll get is the length of his back right to the base of his tail. Then I'll get a measurement around his neck at the collar. And I also wanna scoot that down and get a measurement a little bit lower down that goes around his shoulders and the front of his chest because I'll have a strap that wraps around at this point. I just wanna make sure that it's long enough. I'm making sure to write down each of my measurements as I go along. I also wanna get a measurement around the fullest part of his torso right behind his legs. And then I just wanna measure a couple of inches back from where his collar is so that I know where the strap is gonna go behind his legs. So I'm just measuring that distance between the collar and the back of his legs. And I forgot to record this last measurement, but I just measured down across his back to either side to see how far down I wanted the jacket to come on the sides of his torso. Okay, bud, good job, good job, good job. Once I have all of my measurements recorded, I'm ready to start drafting this coat. And I'll only be drafting half of the coat because I will be cutting this on the fold. So I'll draw a rectangle that is 12 inches long, which is Hux's back length. And then the depth of the rectangle is gonna be half of the across back measurement. So for Hux, that ended up being five and a quarter inches. Next, I'll draft the strap that will go around Huxley's torso. And this strap is going to be the shoulder depth distance that I measured from his collar to the back of his leg. The length will be his torso circumference divided by two and then the width of the strap is just going to be two inches and this is just a measurement that I decided to make it. I also need to draft a strap for the front of the jacket so I'm just creating an extension that will be half of the neck circumference when included with the top of the jacket and then at the bottom it also needs to be long enough to cover the front of his chest so my extension ended up being three and a half inches once all of these shapes are combined we have the framework for our coat the only thing that i want to do next is just to lengthen the straps on the bottom and the front for a little bit of extra overlap by three inches each and then i just want to curve all of these corners so that they're a little bit easier to sew um, a binding on once i finish the coat and then this will just be cut on the fold and that's our pattern this coat will have two layers an exterior layer and a lining layer and I'm cutting the exterior layer first out of some ripstop nylon that I had left over from my puffy coat project so now Huxley and I will have matching coats for winter and I'm using my rotary cutter for this because it just makes it a little bit easier and like I said I'm cutting this on the fold so that when I open this up I will have the basic outline of his jacket for the lining, I'm using this Sherpa fleece fabric that I had left over from my Teddy fleece jacket project. And I'm just using that exterior piece that I just cut as my pattern piece for the Sherpa fabric. And I'm cutting the Sherpa on a single layer just because it's so bulky. I wanna make sure that I flip this over so that I have wrong sides together. And so right sides are facing out on both the front and the back. And I'm gonna pin this together all the way around and then take this over to the serger and connect these two pieces all the way around the perimeter and neaten the edges. So when I cut this, I wasn't being too precious about getting it just right on the Sherpa fabric because I knew I was gonna be trimming this with my serger. And if you're not using a serger, you may wanna be a little bit more neat about this and maybe use a zigzag stitch um, or even a straight stitch on your sewing machine to connect the two pieces around this perimeter. And when I get to these tight corners, I'm just taking my time and rotating the pieces under the serger blade to make sure that it's a neat edge. Once I have these two pieces connected, I just want to find the center of the coat. So I'm folding this in half lengthwise and widthwise, and I will draw lines with my Chaco liner to start setting the framework for my quilting lines. I'm also gonna mark two notches on each of these lines that are all equally distant from the center, and I will use these as the starting point for my 
45 degree angle quilting lines. And it took me a minute to get these lines drawn on here straight because this is so plush with that fleece lining. But I found that if I just gently placed my ruler on the fabric and didn't press too hard, it was a lot easier to get the lines straight and consistent. And I just used the width of my ruler for marking all of these lines parallel at a 45 degree angle across the entire jacket. For my quilting lines, I'm going to be using this contrast orange thread because I thought it looked really nice against the olive green nylon. And I'll also be using a Microtex needle, which is really nice to sew through nylon with because it's really sharp and it helps kind of prevent things from snagging. So I'll just take my time here sewing methodically each of these lines until I have quilted the entire jacket. Once I have sewn all of these diagonal lines in one direction, I'm going to do the same exact procedure to sew the lines in the opposite direction, creating a diamond grid pattern on this coat with quilt lines. Once I had all of the quilt lines sewn onto the jacket, I just wanted to take this over to Huxley and do a little fitting to decide where I wanted to place the Velcro. Okay, yeah, so I think I'm gonna do this kind of like up here, a little hot. Max, work with me here, bud. Yeah, I'll just put a little hole right there. This will go under here. I feel like the back is a little loose, but it might be okay. I'll wait until I get the Velcro on to see what to do next. Okay. I had this little cotton bag that a sheet set came in that happened to have just the right amount of Velcro for my project. And I also wanted to use a little bit of the fabric to create a little placket for a buttonhole that I wanted to put in the top of the jacket for Huxley's leash D-ring to go through. So I just cut a little rectangle and interfaced that with some pretty heavy duty interfacing. And then I pinned that to the center top of the jacket and just sewed around the perimeter to adhere it here. On the back, I kind of trimmed away some of the extra fluff from that Sherpa just so that it wouldn't get in the way when I sewed the buttonhole. Then I used my buttonhole function to sew a pretty large buttonhole here. And this will be the place where Huxley's collar, the little D-ring on his collar comes through. And I just wanted it to be really sturdy there because I knew that that would probably be a place that got a lot of stress. Now I can attach the Velcro. So I'm attaching the rough side of the Velcro first and I'm attaching this on the exterior of the jacket at the top and the right side. Then I'll attach the softer portion of the Velcro on the opposite side, also at the top right side. And you can see this is very sticky Velcro, which is great. So once I got that pinned, I'm just going to sew around the perimeter of all of those Velcro pieces. I'll use the rest of this little cotton bag to create my bias binding for the perimeter of the jacket. And I'm just lining it up on my cutting board and cutting it at an angle to get it started so that I can cut these strips on the bias. And once I get that angled, that 45 degree angle cut, I'm gonna line this up straight and cut several strips that are two inches wide, again, on the bias. And cutting these strips on the bias is gonna make them a little bit stretchy so that they are easier to form around the curves of this jacket. So to connect the pieces together, I'm going to take two pieces of the bias tape and they have the angled edges here. I'm gonna align these at a 90 degree angle and sew them together at a 45 degree angle so that once I open them up, I have a long strip. So I've connected several strips together just like this. Now I just want to press those seams open where I connected all the pieces together. And then I'll go through and trim the edges just to make sure that the edges are nice and straight so that those little, those little seams aren't hanging off the edge. I wanna make sure that I have enough to wrap around the entire perimeter. And here I didn't, so I just had to add a couple more pieces. So I did that and now I am ready to start making my bias tape. I usually use this little bias tape maker, but because my bias tape is a little bit too wide for this, I'm just gonna do this manually. So I'm folding the edges of this bias tape in toward the center and I'll do that along the entire length. And then once I have that folded in, I will fold this in half so that those folded edges are now concealed within the bias tape. 
I also really like to stretch my bias tape. So to do this, I'm gonna mist the bias tape with this little misting bottle, which I absolutely love. With some water, my steam function on my iron is a little bit crazy and really frustrates me, so I never use it. Anyhow, I've misted this bias tape with water and I'm going to iron it and stretch it while I'm ironing it. And this is gonna make my bias tape installation much smoother which seems a little counterintuitive, but trust me, it works like a charm. So I'm gonna unfold the bias tape and align it with the edge of the jacket at the perimeter, and I'm gonna sew along the entire perimeter with the bias tape right sides together to the jacket right in that fold that I created when I folded the bias tape. So I'm using that fold as my seam allowance, essentially. I'll continue working my way around the jacket and if I get to some curves that are really tight and hard to get around, I might snip into the bias tape just a little bit to help me work around that curve. But generally, I was able to get around this okay. I just had to kind of take my time and slowly lift and lower the presser foot, work my way around, kind of try to guide it in place. So once I have this sewn to one side of the jacket, I'm going to fold the bias tape to the other side, to the lining side making sure to maintain that fold that I have in the other side of the jacket so I'll have a nice neat finish. And I'm going to top stitch all the way around the perimeter from the exterior side of the jacket, making sure that I'm catching that fold on the lining side of the jacket when I do this. So I'm just using my fingers to kind of feel around for that. So now you can see that I've got this bias tape attached all the way around the perimeter and it's just a really nice little contrast. So now I'm almost done. I just have to cut open my buttonhole for Huxley's collar D-ring, and I'm using my buttonhole chisel here to cut open a little slit. And I'm actually, I did this a little bit wide so that it would be easier to get the D-ring through this little hole. So I've just cut out a little sliver of the fabric here. And this is done, and it's ready to be worn by my little sweet baby boy. And I love how this little coat turned out. It looks so stinking cute on him. I'm very pleased with this project. And I think Mr. Huxley is too. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that little bell icon. That way you'll be notified when I release new videos in the future. Okay, I think that is all I have for you today. I will see you in the next video. Bye. Huxley has had a few cameos in most of my videos. He's usually pretty close by whenever I am working on tutorials. And I have to tell you, my husband is usually pretty um, offended that people do not comment on how adorable Huxley is. You wanna be on the YouTube channel? Yeah, let's get in there. I don't even know what to say now. I've got a dog in my arms. Is this awkward? <laughs>